Hi everyone, Paul and Sasha Scale Modeler. Back today, part four of the Great War Hobby F15 build. Uh, last time you saw where we were at, we got the cockpit assembled, side consoles on, we placed it in the uh, front fuselage halves to test fit it. Um, today, uh, you can see where I'm at. I've done a little bit of work off camera. Uh, basically, we've got the fuselage halves together, uh, glued with Tamiya Extra Thin. That was then left to set. I had to clamp it a little bit because, like I said last time, there were a few very race like gaps and it did need a bit of pressure just to seal it properly mainly because of the way the front uh, wheel well goes together um, so that was left to dry I've then tried some, I've used it before but never properly on uh, an entire like aircraft seam uh, I used super glue as a filler um, the reason I did that, uh, one of my uh, 172 Mustangs was taken to a model show recently uh, I think it was a Cosford uh, Tim from Value Kits took it, just as a display piece. Hadn't looked at the kit for, well, I built it nearly a year ago now. And um, looking at the fuselage seams, I could actually see where it had a bit of shrinkage on the filler. Now, when I built it, there was no shrinkage there. This is just over time. It's very, very warm in my workshop. Uh, when I'm in here, it's normally around the 22 to 25 degrees. Uh, it's, you know, it's a nice warm temperature, but it is quite warm. Um, you know, let's get the window open or what have you. So it can heat up quite a bit. I think over time that putty shrunk. I think it was Vallejo plastic putty I used on it. So obviously you've also got to wait for that putty to dry. Can need a couple of applications. They need Mr. Surfacer, and it can be a bit of a you know drawn out affair. So I thought I use super glue. Uh, on Cohen's recommendation, I bought. Let me get the right one. The Bob Smith Industries super glue. I got all three. I got the the blue, the pink, and the purple. As you can see there, you've got a real thin one in the blue, which is a 1 to 3 second gap uh, cure. Uh, the extra thick, which is a 10 to 25, and the gap filling one, which is a uh, 5 to 15 second cure. I used the purple one, and all I did was I mask and taped just up the sides. I'll zoom in so you can see. Get these out of shot. I literally mask and taped just up the sides, off away from it, to save losing more detail than we actually needed to. Then using my Super applicator, just literally dab the super glue as needed. Not a lot, not a lot at all. Sound a bit like Paul Daniels there. Not a lot. Um, just a little bit where it was needed across. Let that set for at least, I think I left it overnight. Uh, I have found using super glue before that, you know, even though it looks and feels like it's set, it can be a little bit tacky on the knees, especially if it's a thicker variety like I just showed. Once that was dried, I went to it with the grey. Uh, UMP, sander, the black, and then finally the buffer. Uh, I have to say it worked remarkably well. Just one application, as you can see. Uh, if I run my nail across, there is no seam there whatsoever, and it's polished up beautifully. And more importantly, I haven't lost a lot of detail because I'm sanding it in one go, and obviously the masking tape holds protect it. I've not lost a lot of detail. Literally, just a couple of rivets need to be scribing, a short section of lines need doing, and it's done. Same underneath. Underneath was obviously a much bigger uh, seam. Uh, and again, if I can scratch along, nothing there at all. And just this little small one at the back, which again, perfect. This is all hidden inside the fuselage, which I'll show you in a little bit. Finally, remember to get the decals on the seats. Uh, like I say, it's all glued in position now. Looking rather good. Got a little bit OTT with the dry brushing, maybe, but at the end of the day, it's my model. I'll do it however the hell I want. Um, and that's that. So that's all ready to go. All I need to do now is rescribe. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to get the. Uh, I zoom back out. I'm going to get us back uh, into the fuselage. It's a bit tricky to hold, it doesn't necessarily sit. I'm not going to struggle mucking about trying to do it. So once I've got it into the fuselage and we've got a bit more stability, then I'll rescribe it. It's going to be very, very simple to do. There's not much to do. So if anyone's building this, George, especially I know you're building it with me, just do that. Try super glue. You don't need a lot. Just get a thick variety. Just a little bit. Take your time sanding it, polishing it, and it, it works really well. Quite impressed how that's worked. Um, what we've got to do now, if I grab this and the instructions, I'll show you where we're at. Move it out of the way. So we've got the front console piece which is here, which is that. That literally sits in position in there, it's just glued in position. And on top you've got the photo etch and acetate head of display, which is this malarkey. Now on the MiG uh, 29 at Built the Great War Hobby, 
that was an absolute pig to do when it was on the aircraft. I absolutely struggled. They were a nightmare to get, and these weren't too bad to glue in position. They're quite fiddly and fragile. They were an absolute nightmare. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this off, and I'm not putting any of these on until literally the canopy's ready to go on, so I can literally put them in, put the canopy on, and they're safe. So this is going to stay off for now, and what we'll do is I'll paint this up, and it's the same flat black we used on the interior this is the same black as well and obviously you've got the clear part in between so we'll paint all this up get this stuck in position then we'll glue these on and stick it on the aircraft we'll just super glue it in place more than likely um, and that's how I'm going to do that if I put that on now I've got to put that on later or I've got to put it on now and it'll get knocked off and if I glue that in position it's a pig to put in trust me been there and done it so I'm going to leave that out I've got a nice flat platform for gluing the uh, head up display on so that's getting left so, like I say, I often go through the instructions, work in quite a weird order, I just look for the way um, it's going to be easiest to do. Now, what we've got now is the front nose cone, which is this. You've got the option, you can have it open, showing the radar, or closed. There's no, either. it's either or, There's no. you can't have both. Uh, I chose to have it closed, I don't want it open, I've got my F-16, the Tamron 132, which I can have open. Uh, this is just, you know, static display piece, so I'm going to glue this in position. Now, it mentions nothing about any nose weight whatsoever, but my Great Wall Hobby F ooh, MiG-29 is a slight tail sitter. If you tap the tail, it's into lift-off position. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, lead shot in here, uh, which I said to you last time I was going to do, and I'm just going to run through very quickly how I do it. Well, how I'm going to do it. I'm going to zoom my camera out so we can see a bit better. So what I've got, I've got some fishing shot, it's just split shot tiny little stuff, there's approximately 15 grams in there so what we're going to do, I'm going to mix it a little bit of PVA in there we're then going to use a scoop, these are brilliant, these are Mr Hobby's paint stairs they come with sp measuring spoons and all sorts and they're great for this, I'm going to pour some in, we're going to mix it up then going to pour that into there I need the instructions again, is we've got the nose radar because we're going to seal it up, there's no point gluing it in position unless you're that way inclined. So what we're left is a nice circular disc, which is this. So once the steel shot's in, and PVA'd in the bottom, I'm going to slot that on the top and liquid cement it in. Job done. So we've got the PVA to stop it rattling round, and this to secure it in. So if it does come loose, it's not rattling round in a big, huge clump inside the aircraft. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm literally, normal PVA, I've no idea what this bottle's like. So I don't know if we're going to get anything out of it, we'll see. Yep, we are. So just put a little bit in there. You could thin it down with water if you wanted. I don't think we're going to need to. Like I say, it's just split shot, split fishing shot. All I'm going to do is mix it round. Let's give it a good coverage. Like so. And I'm going to scoop it out. And scoop it into the, um, the nose cone itself, which will pop in there as a stand. You've got a nice overhead shot there. You can see right in. And we're just going to gently scoop it all in. Like so. Try not to get any exterior. Not to do any harm. But it saves less clean up, obviously. There we go. So that's everything out. So like I say, approximately 15 grams. I'm going to get that out of there. And I'll move that out of the way. So if you can keep the nose cone clean, so be it. That's the way to do it. If we don't get every single piece of shot on there, it's at the end of the world. And what you can do, you could probably leave that to one side. Uh, it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. You could, that would more than likely go itself in there. No problem at all. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab a bit of tissue, pop that on its side. They're already holding themselves quite well in there. Obviously, I don't know if this is going to be a tail sitter. But I'm not taking the chance, so I'd rather take a bit of extra time, glue a bit of weight in there. It's only 15 grams, it's not a huge weight, but it's plenty enough to keep it steady. Then got UMP PE placer. Pop that in there, which is actually sat on the shot real nice, and I just wanted to touch couple of the edges and in fact 
I think we're going to super glue that in. I think super glue will be a bit of a better bond because I think adding the, uh, the PVA is going to hold most of it in anyway. So I think we'll just lob in a little bit of super glue. Which one should we have? We need a thick one. So we'll go for the gap filling because technically there's a gap. And I'm just going to put a couple of splodges, make sure you guys can see. Around the edge. Like so. Pop the lid on the super glue. Use the back of the pencil. Pop it in like that. So as you can see we've got a whole nose full of lead shot. That's PVA didn't stop it rattling around. There's nothing worse than lead shot rattling around. It doesn't make make absolute pain on the back side of this. And then we've glued a surplus radar in above to stop any if anything does come loose over time. Now that, I'm going to put that to one side. Uh, I'm going to place it in my flexi file tool tender over there. Out of the way. We'll leave that to dry and then once it's dry I'll probably leave it overnight. So we'll glue it in position next time we come back um, for part five is it? Um, and I'll glue it on the nose cone and we'll get that rescribing done once the fuselage is in. And that's the nose all done. So there we go, let's clean that up quickly. Like I said, the lead shot is just fishing shot. Uh, I've got a big bag of it, it's just tiny split shot. I've no idea the size, I'm not a fisherman. Uh, I've no idea the cost either. But I can't imagine it being that expensive. And in there, there's enough for oh, 50 aircraft probably, depending on the scale. But there's loads, like I say, a bit of PVA. A little bit of, you could use plastic card, plastic, you know, to hold it in. Uh, anything at all. So. Not a problem. Okay, so all that's drying to one side. What I've done in the meantime, we cut off the intakes and the bottom section of the fuselage. Uh, we're going to glue these together. Uh, once they're all dry, we can then put them in position. There's a few holes to drill. Uh, doesn't give you a size. I'm assuming it's literally the size of the hole that we're left, which they do all vary in sizes. So that'll be worth a, uh, a look back through to see what we've got there. Uh, oh, sorry, forwards to see what we've got, which I think we'll do now quickly. It's going to be ordnance, probably going to be a drop tank uh, as it's in the centre. See it, there we go, it's missiles, pylons, and yep, it's a drop tank. So what we need to do is find a pylon for that. Let me have a looky see. D, so it's just a central drop tank. Hmm. Right, yeah. So we'll have to pay attention to that obviously when we come to drill it, make sure we don't do them too small. To be honest though, too small is not a problem. As long as you put the hole through, you can see where they physically are. So that's probably what we'll do. So we're going to glue these in position. Like I said, I've cut them off, tie them up very roughly with a couple of uh, UMP thinny sticks. Uh, obviously, th this section is not going to be seen anywhere, so it's not. You know, uh, fully important to clean it all up. Uh, obviously, the kit parts are not a seamless intake at all. So, if you want it that way, you're going to have to a bit of work in there to get them that way. But for now, we're just going to glue them all together and we'll deal with what we've got when we come to it. Because these have to go to one side to dry for a while um, before we can work on them. So, just tied them up very roughly, as you can see, the sprue gates. Uh, haven't been fully sanded off or polished and I'm not being particularly careful with the glue because like I say this isn't going to be visible the exterior not as far as I'm aware anyway so just slap in the extra thin give it a slight push together make sure the front's lined up and the back and away we go so the steel rain sig finished the other day and um I've got my judging to do uh, later on today. Actually, as soon as I finish making this video, I'm going to start judging. Um, this is absolutely stunning work. It's going to be a real job. It's always an absolute nightmare picking them. And me and me and Lee always argue. Uh, not nastily, but we just never agree. We've normally got the same people, but we've normally got them in different orders. Because uh, obviously, you know, you're judging on your own opinion, and although we score it, 
it is an opinion. So to get the same uh, winners is quite rare. But we've got Gary involved now, Gary Bottoms. Um, make sure this is the right path for that. Must be. Yep, yeah, because it doesn't line up at the back. You can see that, it's a bit strange. So I'm assuming. So, yeah, they are the same parts. Uh, like I said, we've got Gary Bottoms involved now, so it's a third person. It's another person to argue with. No, it's not. It's, an it's another opinion which can help settle the matter at the end of the day. Um, but there's some stunning work, absolutely stunning. Um, so, looking forward to having a look. I haven't really looked at the uh, reveals. I've looked at a few. I've followed a couple of the build threads. Uh, obviously, Myself and Lee, our time is spent everywhere with UMP, with the forum, with the YouTube channel, Lee's business, my business, which is picked up recently, which is really good. Uh, our time isn't always uh, used where it should be. I try and spend as much time as I can on the forum, as you can see by the amount of posts I create, but I can't follow and read every thread. So what I tend to do is leave a lot of the build threads until it comes to judging, then sit there and read them all for the first time. Um, that's what I prefer to do. So if you don't get a comment on your build thread as you build, and don't think I'm not looking or Lee's not looking, uh, it's just we know when they're finished, we're going to have to spend the time reading and having a look. So I figure I might as well do it in one go and get the full effect that way. But like I say, some stunning work, absolutely stunning. Um, so, pinch of Sue wins it. And congratulations to whoever does. So, there we go, there's one done. Pop the next one on. Like I said, my, my plumbing business has picked up a little bit. We started advertising again. Um, we had a few older customers come back to us, uh, a few new ones. Uh, have you seen the posts on? Facebook I put up of the uh, bathroom from hell I've been working in recently. Um, you'll see what I mean. I was back there yesterday putting the bath in. Um, certainly fun in games. It's a, a wipe your feet on the way out house, as I call them. Because it's uh, not the cleanest. You know, nobody house, nobody's house is tidy and clean. My house can be a you know, a bit untidy at times, but being clean, that's totally different. And if you've seen the pictures, um, I have no idea what is smeared all over that bathroom wall. <laughs> if you want to see the pictures, go to the ISM Facebook page. I think I posted them on there. Or was it on my my actual page? I can't remember now. It's there somewhere. Um, and it's on the forum, I think, as well. Whatever's smeared all over the wall, it's brown, and as I found it yesterday, it's very sticky because I had to lean on it whilst I was putting the bath in. Um, so when I came home, I'd also been rolling around on the floor in there, putting the bath in, the waste in and what have you. So when I came home, I took my uh, work clothes off and burnt them, basically. No, I didn't. Uh, straight in the wash, I jumped straight in the shower. Absolutely disgusting, but it pays the wage, and it pays a good wage. Without sounding like a complete ass saying that. Um, jobs like that, I've treated myself lately to an awful lot of kits, as you guys have probably seen. Uh, my stash is, well, it has grown immensely over the past. I've no idea if I glued near already, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, it's grown immensely over the past couple of months, mainly down to Tim of Value Kit. He's a real bad influence because he lives around the corner from me. So I'm often popping around there to have a chat or a cup of tea and I always end up coming away with something and yesterday I came home with another seven kits which is, yeah, interesting. So I had to relocate my stash from where it was which was behind me where I sit now on a shelf new unit. It's actually had to go above where you see me do my new show segments where I do my intro. So you'll see those from now on, and uh, I've got a hell of a stash now. So, can't fault that at all. Right, back to this. Uh, they're all glued, so I'll let them dry. They're probably not going to need sanding up on the outside. I'm going to skip through and see exactly how much is going to be seen. I'm a bit worried about that, though. 
that step just there because that's the front of it where you're going to see I am a tad worried it's not a perfect fit so I think all I have to do is as the extra thin starts to dry I'm going to have to manipulate it like so a little bit of fingernail pressure push it where we want it as we go because as you can see that step is quite prominent there I don't want that because it's going to look awful the beauty of time extra thin is it does say sorry it does say wet wanted to melt the plastic for quite some time So it gives us a little bit of leeway there to get that done, but it's going to be a bit tricky to do. Like I said, this is a visible part, as you can see where it's sitting there at the front. Um, hmm. So we'll play that one by ear. I've got the lower half of the fuselage off. This had probably 15 locating points on the sprue gates. Uh, let's get that out of the way so there's not a white bounce. Um, so what I've done, and it's a lesson I've learned over time, is I've just literally tidied it up, not smoothed it right up with the sander because I find I can bite you in the backside sometimes, um, and we'll, we'll see how that attaches on later. So what we need to do is we need to drill the hole next, so we'll do that quickly. Then I'll go off camera, we'll let those dry, and we'll see how they look when we come back. So we've got the various hole sizes, there's three in fact. We've got a small one, large one, medium one. So I'm just going to put a generic hole right in the middle of each one. So it's probably a millimetre hole. So not too large, not too small. As long as you can see where it is, that's all that matters. Using my nice new Tamiya pin vise, which is a Beautiful thing, two different, four different uh, pin sizes because you've got the four, two different adapters, both double ended, one on either end that you can switch and change around. Very nice grip, nice and comfy to hold. And this thing's even ball raced, so it's got ball race bearing in there, so it's super, super smooth to use, absolutely lovely. Um, you guys know I like my Tell me your tools. Let's just have a look at our reference, make sure we are drilling the right holes. Which we are. So because we're not using the largest, go straight in the middle. As long as you can see the hole underneath, which we can, then at a later date you can put make it bigger if required. Not much pressure needed at all. There are three. One at the front. Job done. I've no idea what the front one's for. Like I say, as long as we've got that reference point where we can see where they are, we can enlarge them at a later date. That's that where we are now. So what it calls for now, obviously there's the holes just put in, there's the intakes we just put together. This has put them in position, which we want to do once we get this front section sorted. I'm going to go through and check what, uh, where they are actually prominent on show, because if they are, they're going to have to be tidied up quite a lot, because they are separating a little bit. I think what I might actually do is I might actually just clamp that. Flat. So rather than trying to push the small section out, I'm going to just push the wider section in. I think that might be an easier way of doing it. And what we've done, once these are all dry, we're getting there with a thinny stick, sand it all off, maybe a bit of Mr. Surfacer to get as smooth as possible. Obviously, because it's a fairly new kit, I don't know if companies have made you know uh, seamless intakes yet, but it's a possibility. Um, but over time, they more than likely will. So if you're building this at a later date, you should be able to... Add any extras you want. So I'm just going to push it to the edge, pop that in. So, as you can see, burner clamp, they're now perfectly straight. Don't know why I didn't think of this before. I'm going to grab a little bit of extra thin off camera so you can't see. Well done, Paul. Just going to chuck a little bit of extra thin in there. Make sure we are still straight, which we are. That's absolutely perfect now. 
So we'll pop that on one side, grab the other one, exactly the same. You can see where it's flared out on this side. Let's move that out of the way again. You can see where it's flared out from the side. So we're going to grab another burner clamp. These things are absolutely superb. They are not cheap. I think they're about nine quid each. Um, but they use a carbon rod, which is this carbon fiber. And literally by friction and the bend of the carbon, which is ultra strong, you do that. And you can see where the rod's bent, the friction holds it on. And the beauty of it is, it's literally fingertip pressure. So you can never put too, never exert too much pressure on what you're doing. Nice rubber clamps which also slide up and down in all different positions. Uh, absolutely stunning. Stunning. Useful. Uh, bit of kit, I use mine all the time. For fuselage halves, anything like this. We don't need a massive amount of pressure. Because we don't, we just need to... Push that in there like so. Get them apart. Make sure we go where we want it, which we have. A little bit extra thin. Like so. And there we go. That one's straight as well. So again, we'll pop out in front to dry. I'm going to just quickly scoot through these instructions while you guys are here. Let's have a look, see how those intakes go in. So, get to the point which is there. I want to see if they are the actual front, which they're not because you've got the actual angled scoop in. So you will be able to see them, so it is important to get them straight. Definitely. At the end of the day, the other trick you can use, if they aren't particularly straight, and as long as the edges are actually covered, use a thin slip of plastic card to slip in, so you get a perfectly formed edge, and I may well do that. To save mucking about sanding all those seams, I may just get some plastic card strip, ultra, ultra thin stuff, pop it in, glue it in, and that'll look absolutely perfect then. Um, but what, like I said, we'll come to that when we, uh, we'll deal with that when we come to it, basically. So I'm going to let those dry. Um... In the meantime, I'm going to attach this bit, which is F2. Um, I might whip off the... Are these the lower wing sections? Yep, lower wing sections. Tidy them up ready. We've got a bit of photo edge to put on. So that'll just be super good in position. A few more holes to drill. And we'll come back once that's all dry. Um, and we've got quite a bit of work here as well involved. So... These look really fiddly as well. They do look rather fiddly. But going by the kits, great hobby kits I've built before, or one of them, uh, I think they'll go together really well. So there we go. I'll let that dry. We'll come back when they're all dry and we'll start putting them in position. Okay, so we've got the lower uh, fuselage section that we just drilled out. Uh, I've now cut off these lower wing sections. A little bit of photo etch to attach, which is a little bit tricky. Uh, it actually calls in instructions for you to measure. Let me move this glue on my so you guys can see. So it actually gives you a measurement there. So it's going to be three millimeters from that power line, 4.23. I mean, what the, how the hell are you supposed to measure 4.23 millimeters away from this one? I did it by eye. So as you can see, it's in a little dab of super glue. What I actually did, I got my tweezers. I grabbed just in the middle there because it's a, obviously a hollow piece of. Uh, photo etch, grabbed in there, dipped either end in a little bit of thick super glue, placed it in position because it's thick, you get a lot more time to manipulate it. Got it where I wanted it, just pushed each edge down as it was drying, got a uh, cotton bud, wiped off the excess uh, super glue, and I can get the excess off later with a buffer. Not a problem. So both of those are done. Like I said, and both by eye. Uh, I'm not mucking about doing a 4.23 millimeters uh, at all. To me, they look like they're in the right position. If they're not, it's tough. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be exactly right. So, what we've got, obviously those intakes are still dry. We're not going to get to those today. I'm going to leave those to dry overnight and we'll come back with part four or five, is it? I forgot what part we're on. Um, wings needed drilling out again. Just one, two holes there, two holes there. Uh, I tidied up all the edges with a uh, thinny stick. Just gave them a, a run over to get any sprues off because the way these fit is absolutely superb. I've already dry fitted them, uh, rather impressive. As you can see, you've got four locating lugs inside, which then gives you a, a lovely, a nice, crisp, faultless seam outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tamier extra thin the insides, 
and then we're going to use my uh, flexi file touch and flow on the other side so we've got a lot less clean up so all I'm going to do is we're going to just put a few dabs in these little cane points like so then we're going to run a little bit along there go see we're inside any glue marks on a problem but obviously still be neat practice makes perfect and just you know pay to get good at your gluing and what have you so we just put that in there to hold that in and this is where it's important to check your fingers for glue as you're pushing it down I'm just going to get those home hopefully that extra thin we get a hold of that inside as you can see just needs pushing over a little bit there so what we'll do we we'll just hold it in position for a little bit uh, one thing I did notice as well, where it's supposed to be, I don't know, but on the back here, where we're by the uh, exhaust, there's a little point that angles out. It was a bit too sharp, and it was stopping it going back in, so I've actually removed it. Well, I haven't removed it. I took the edge off it with a sander, and that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to pop that down there. In fact, we're going to pop it out away in case you spill anything. We've got our... Flexi final touch and flow system, which I don't think I've actually used in anger on camera other than the review I did. It's very, very clever. So pop that in, give it a squeeze up. Let it settle, we're going to pop that to one side because the last thing we want to do is knock it open. Hold. What have we got on this? I'm just going to pop that down. Obviously, when you're using that flexi file, keep it level because if you tip it up, obviously gravity take effect. And you start losing your glue, so there we go. Let's see how it goes. We'll start from the back. We'll work our way forward. And that thing works beautifully. Absolutely flawless. Uh, somebody commented on that review. I did this flexi file system so you can do it with a brush. There's no way, and I will use a term my dad used to use. There's no way while there's a hole in my arse you could do that as neat with a brush. There is not one glue mark there. The whole length of that seam, it is perfect. So there is no way you could do that with a brush that neat. Or that quick. Not that, you know, speed is of the essence. That is a flawless glue line. Absolutely superb. Like I said, it's the first time I've used it in anger on camera. I've used it on little bits here and there, but nothing that long. And that must be 10 inches long. And that is flawless. So there's no cleanup required there, fantastic, absolutely awesome bit of kit. So all we need to make sure is that we don't lose, you know, by lifting off this, that a bit of weight loses our seam, but that is flawless. Well impressed. Well impressed. And you can have that saying off me, while there's a hole in your ass. I use it quite a lot. Uh, it's one of my favourite sayings. That, and I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. Which always cracks Cohen up when I say that to him. Um, but I am well impressed by that little system. That works very well. Again, when you come to the other side, make sure you've got no glue on your fingers. And all we're using the extra thin is just to get some purchase inside. Not that it's a better glue. But it, it is good glue. I love extra thin. Um really do rate it but I wouldn't say anything was any better the only thing I would say I've got to be careful of glue now is that obviously some dry and evaporate faster than others so it's something to bear in mind just 
got to be careful of runs like that, that they don't seep out underneath. So I know I'm off camera a little bit. Let's have a little looky see underneath what we've got. Make sure we've got no escapey glue marks. So we all got in position there. A little bit of glue. I'm just talking to myself here, don't you guys worry. All I want to do is get a nice hole inside with the extra thin, and that means we can get that nice flawless seam outside with the flexi file glue system. The essentially the same glue, they just they don't glue anything, they melt the plastic, and that's what forms the bond. Um, you just work in a different way. Obviously, Tammy is extra thin as a secret recipe. And then I'm not going to share it with anybody. Um, <laughs> I'm well impressed by that. Absolutely superb. Uh, again, so we get it in the position we want. Be extra vigilant with glue on your fingers um, because it will ruin all this beautiful surface detail. There's my phone. Got to put the house phone on silent. Hopefully somebody's answered it, that'll do me. Rookie mistake. So there we go. Get it in as we require, and then what we're going to do, we're holding inside a little bit of upward pressure. I keep this in, I'm going to check I've got enough glue in this, which I have. And we're going to start from the back again. So, right, I didn't hold it up enough, didn't hold enough pressure, idiot, there we go, just needs a little bit of forced upper pressure and it angles it up and makes it seem tight on the fuselage. Let's go right now. So we're just going to make sure we push it in position. A little bit of a gap this side. It must be where I've cut it off the sprue gates and sanded it. Maybe we're a bit too uh, enthusiastic. But a tiny little bit of filler in there is no problem unless we can get a bit of purchase on the plastic but again a nice faultless seam make sure we're all in all the locating logs are all identical which they are flip it over excellent so here we go I can say one side does seem to fit slightly better than the other so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna reload the flexi file up So, and I'm just going to run it down this seam this side because it's not as good as the other unfortunately hopefully that will make it a bit better because that was flawless again as you can see we have got a very very slight gap just there but easily rectified I'm hoping I can push it in we get a little bit of molten plastic pop out and again down the back no problem that's much better now so there we go glued in position so extra thin inside to get the main purchase of it and then using our flexi file system which gets top marks off me that has worked phenomenally well really really well indeed that's excellent now because we've got I'm just going to be careful this glue I'm going to pop it down because I glue this in position now, this then gives us a detachment point for our nose cone. So I'm going to flip it around. I don't want to handle it too much because I've just glued it. That slots in position like so. And you can see the join we've now got at the front. So it's going to need a little bit of attention. Maybe we'll get it with a bit of glue. And hopefully that's alright. But it's not a massive seam at all. Uh, and like I say, a bit of tidying up. 
we'll be fine there, hopefully. And like I said, there's not much detail there to lose. If you mask and tape it up again, no problem at all. That's superb, so that's ready for next time. Uh, one other thing I did forget to mention, I'm just going to pop this to one side so we get it out of the way. Pop it there, and I'm just going to empty this. Whilst I can. Like I say, if you've not seen the review of the Flexi file, it is on the, the forum somewhere. Well worth a look. Without a shadow of a doubt. Very, very handy system. Um, go and have a look, and if you want to buy one, go and get one, because it's well worth the money. Well worth it. Um, what was I saying? Pop that on the right end. So, one thing I forgot to mention before, on the nose, obviously, when you put the fuselage halves together on the front, don't forget to put this in. Uh, if you are going to have the nose open, put your weight in here at the front. So you have got access there, you could drop some weight in, same way I did with the ball bearings. Uh, and once you put this on, whoa, they are sealed in. So as long as you use the PVA glue, you'll be fine. Not a problem at all. Uh, we have a look how our nose cone is doing. Looks to be okay to me. We pop that in position. You can see the fit isn't bad, but I'm going to let this totally dry. We'll come back for part five. Get that glue in position. Uh, I'm not sure what else is next. I think we'll start building up the upper wings, but what we'll do in part five is we'll get all this on and together. Um, get those intakes into this. That's all the lower fuse arms together. I think the upper half, in fact, I get the instructions rather than actually wondering what we're doing. We'll actually have a look. We've got the amendment sheet, which is number six. So the first amendment's here. Uh, the difference being is they are slightly different parts. They must have changed the way they did it. So it's six and seven are different. So if you haven't got the amendment sheet, you don't need to worry if you have this way you need to pay attention. So like I say, this is where we're at now. We'll just put these together, glued in position, drill the holes. These are glued ready to go. The nose is all ready to go. And that leads on to this. We've got the upper hull assembly. So we've got various parts to pick and choose, which we'll look into. The uh, mini gun, uh, which is front, just the barrels are imitated. Obviously, aerolons, flaps, etc. Not flaps. Um, and then we come on to the engine intakes as well. Which still are very complicated. They're a bit fiddly by the look of it. And I don't know why I chose like five different ones. Four different ones, sorry. The two different variants. Yeah, one must be open, one must be closed. Okay. So, again, so we need to decide next time. Then we're on to the engines, which sadly, like the MiG. It more than likely won't be seen at all. So, uh, like I said, I don't think they'll be taken in and out, but we'll have a looky see. Um, that leads us on. So, it's going to be a qu fairly quick build, hopefully. Um, we've got a couple of awkward bits out of the, the Obviously, the cockpit's done, nose cone's done, uh, the lower hull's done, the lower wing sections are done. So, we're all ready to go. Obviously, if you're following this build, if you get stuck at all, send me a PM on the forum or uh, on Facebook, anywhere you want, or Skype if you're on there, um, and ask how you did it or how I do this and that. And we'll see how we go. So that's us for today. So like I said, I'll be back for part five uh, over the next week or so. Um, and uh, we'll get all these bits in the fuselage and start building the plane together, hopefully. So there we go. So thanks for watching today. Um, as I say, uh, George has got his build on the forum. If you look in the jet section, uh, George is there. I've got a few photo builds on there. I'll probably add some more today as well. Um, and that's it. So if you're not a member of Intash Scale Model, come and join our forum. Very, very friendly forum. Uh, you'll, everybody's very, very friendly. We've got no uh, river counters on there. There's no flaming, no criticising, unless you're asked for it, obviously, for comments and criticisms on your posts. Join our Facebook page, and obviously, you've seen the videos on YouTube. All the others are on here as well. So there we go, Paul Mintash Scale Modeler. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time, and I'll see you on the forum.